It may be. It was a mystery. Back in October 2018, I flew out to Spain to see my brother, David, an English teacher and actor by training. We headed to the picturesque mountain town of Rasca Fria, had some beers, had a wander around in the hills, and plotted some ideas for my historical YouTube channel, History Time, which had just been monetized, turning it from a side project into a career. One of those ideas we had was for David to take over the narration on my second channel, Voices of the Past. Concocted after a realization that no other channel dedicated entirely to reading historical sources word for word existed. Fast forward again, it's January 2020. Our side project, Voices of the Past, has just hit 100,000 subscribers. And history time, 250,000. I'm off to Spain again for our annual meeting, this time to the beautiful city of Segovia, home to Celts, Romans, Moors and Spaniards. What plots will we come up with this time? How are you doing? I've just boshed out three hours of teaching small children and now it's party time. We're about to get a train to Segovia which is uh, which has got a big old Roman aqueduct. We definitely didn't just accidentally come in here and discover that it was a sort of like a five-star restaurant. Um, this was definitely a choice that we made. No, we need a better sound than that. Oh yeah, this one. Oh no. No, yeah, it's made out of plastic. Sick is this? Come to Spain. By the first century AD, the Iberian Peninsula had been home to cities and civilizations for thousands of years. Phoenicians, Greeks, Celtiberians all left their mark here. But of course, it was the Romans who stamped themselves even more permanently on the landscape. The famous general Pompey, rival to Caesar, came here during those years to wage campaigns, but also to found cities. One of those cities, founded not too long after the formation of the empire, around 2,000 years ago, was Segovia, potentially constructed on Celtiberian foundations. A warrior culture said to be some of the fiercest and best fighters in all of Europe. This aqueduct, arguably the finest example of Roman architecture left intact in Spain and indeed anywhere in the empire, followed not long after, as people flocked to the new boomtown for economic and societal opportunity. Later, when Rome fell, the city entered a lengthy decline. Hemmed in, but eventually merging with Visigothic invaders, until the Arab conquests of the 8th century led mostly to its abandonment. 
Though the Alcazar here, built on Roman foundations, certainly has layers of Muslim influence, suggesting more to the story than at first glance. Later, this castle would serve as part of the inspiration for Walt Disney's fairy tale castles. For hundreds of years, the ruins of the city lay on the landscape in no man's land between Christian and Muslim, a testament to the power of those who came before. Until finally, as the Reconquista truly dawned in the decades after the collapse of the Caliphate of Cordoba, along with the fragmentation of Muslim power into many states, Alfonso the Brave, King of Leon and Castile, a man who unapologetically embraced the title Emperor of all Hispania, is thought to have repopulated the city with Christian settlers from the north. Presumably, any Muslim inhabitants of the region were forced out. In the centuries to come, the city became an important trading center and manufacturer of textiles, resplendent with beautiful examples of Gothic architecture. In the 16th and 17th centuries, it entered a second period of decline eventually being sacked in 1808 by the French, before finally beginning to recover in the 19th and 20th centuries. Today, the place remains a popular tourist destination for Spaniards and for those traveling from abroad. Let's go and have a look. He's had a little sleep, a little crash, and he's ready for some history. Back into business. Can you explain something about that thing? A little behind the scenes for you. Setting up a couple of cameras there. I do like a time lapse. All right, so here we are in uh, España. We're at the ancient city of Segovia, which uh, still exists today, as you can see. Lots of people around. And there's a giant aqueduct, which is very rare. You don't really get these anymore. Um, I imagine it's been reconstructed a bit over the years, but uh, still mostly about 2,000 years old, that. So, first century AD, Roman Emperor Augustus comes to power. He's, uh, he's a pretty big fella. There's a famous saying about Augustus, that he came to Rome, a city of wood and stone, and he left it a city of marble. And a similar sort of transition happened all over the empire. Uh, in Spain, in Roman Palestine, in Britain, all of these places, you get cities popping up around this time. All of them very similar, very similarities between all of them. And uh, we'll look at that in a future History Time video. Is that aqueduct made of marble then? So what is history time? Well, it's a hashtag I used on some historical posts I did back in 2014, whilst interrailing around Europe. It wasn't for another three years, however, that I uploaded my first video, being pleasantly surprised that no other channel had already taken the name. You can still watch that video and see my immensely questionable editing skills. At one point, my phone goes off and apparently I just left that in there. At the time, I was working minimum wage day jobs and writing endless amounts of unfinished science fiction. I can't really remember why I even uploaded that video, and I certainly didn't expect it to go anywhere, let alone become a career. If I have one piece of advice for anyone in a similar situation to me, it's this. Just start the project. The rest will fall into place along the way. All I was was a history graduate wishing to get into the field somehow, but no idea how to do it. It doesn't matter if you don't know where you're going, just start the journey anyway. Upload that video, start that blog, just do it, and you'll find out where you're headed along the way. 
And don't do it for anyone else. Just do it for yourself. Just do it! Fast forward another three years, and that one questionable video has exploded into a library of over a hundred, along with other channels to complement the main one. And I'm delighted to say we just hit 250,000 subscribers. Thank you so much, guys. I couldn't have done it without you. Now I can go to places like this and find out the epic history involved. The city of Segovia, and Spain in general, is filled with huge buildings and impressive architecture. A legacy to the plethora of empires and kingdoms who ruled this place over the millennia. Today, many of the most impressive buildings are churches and cathedrals. Relics of the last empire which ruled here. It's also got its fair share of palaces too, some of which you can actually stay in. We settle for a nice hotel with at least 600 years of history contained within. Here we are with our new channel. You always keep trying to tell me that I'm not a fighter, but I am a fighter. I so knew Donald was good with the TKO, and they all said, oh, he's just a left hand, you know. He stuffed the left hand. But now I think I've proved some of them wrong, no? Oh, a little bit further up. <laughs> trying to grab. What kind of booze do you think? Hello? Got a video? Yeah. We're going to go have a booze. Boozy, boozy. We're going to have a booze. Uh, I'm known for my, my, my enjoyment of the sauce. Uh, so we're going to go and find ourselves a couple of. Uh, a couple of cheeky Vimtos, a couple of Shandy Basses, a couple of uh, beers. There we go. I've written down history time. I've written down voices of the past. Uh, I've written down Sci-Fi Hub. And I've written down Pete Kelly Vlog. Uh, this is it. Um, I'm going to make a few claims. It's been a while since we've done something like this. A, a year. Um, a year. A year. It's a year. It's been a year. So, last time we did something like this is essentially the reason why David is doing Voices of the Past now. Uh, it's kind of the reason why that channel exists. Yeah, Pete was really keen on recording every single part of the Iliad chapter by chapter for university students. Um, Look, I thought people would be uh, as nerdy as I am, you know. Um, <laughs> turns out they're probably not. I will do... I am going to do a little bit of the Iliad. That's coming up, so... Eventually, it happens. What goes around comes around. A nice time. We've got a got a bit of a, a startery type thing here. Lovely bit of gravy in a pot. You just drink it. Looks a bit like a cup of wee. You can get away with drinking this in England. Do it all the time. Yeah, Spain. Place you... where dreams are made. Well, you can drink a cup of soup in a restaurant. Yeah. Gracias. I'll tell you what. <clears throat> Good bread in Spain. I got. A, I got an English menu just to be safe. This evening, we decided to indulge in a local delicacy, suckling pig. Scratching. I've written on a piece of paper, moonshots. The idea here is that we think about things that are extreme, that are um, probably impractical, uh, and then by thinking about them, we are able to reach for more impressive things. 
so far, I have nothing. Fine. There's a video, just looking back to Peter's videos, there's a video here, uh, a year ago, seven minutes long, and it reports to cover Homer, the Trojan War, and the late Bronze Age collapse. In seven minutes. Good Bit of weather. Bit of weather. I don't realise, um... Obviously, it was really nice though. Oh yeah, man. That's really no nice. regrets. New t-shirt, lads. Yeah! <laughs> Finest merchandise. Two for a pound. You'll have to cut that, won't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a nice brisk morning. Yeah, man, I like it. It's nice. We're on search for some grub. Sunny Spain. Snow capped mountains over there. It's not all, it's all desert. Is this a gimbal? Yeah. That's nuts. Segovia, for the 15th time, we are introducing where we are. Here in the monster. We tried, we tried to go for a walk, um, we ended up here. Not more Spanish than this, eh? Not more Spanish than this. Heavy business this, eh? Cameraman. David's latest video didn't do very well. <laughs> yeah. Wow, it's been three years since I started History Time. What an incredible three years it's been. Thank you guys so much for watching the channel. I couldn't do this without you. I leave Spain with a crazy amount of ideas for the coming year. I've said this before, but honestly, history time is just getting started. By far the best material I've ever made is on the way. You've been watching History Time on Tour. I'll see you on the next one. Hey guys, so I've just been uh, out filming. Um, come back to the room. You know, I've been doing the work, work of the trip. Uh, look what we got here. <laughs> David, I run History Time. This is my brother Pete. He runs um, Sci Fi Hub. I'm just happy to be involved, you know. He's happy to come along. So our third brother, Kevin, he runs Voices of the Past. Sadly, he couldn't be here. He's got no legs. This is where David lives. It's a bit of a desolate wasteland. <laughs> uh, there's no one around, really, since, <laughs> since all of the uh, issues last year. Look how grim it um, is. And there was a bit of a poison gas cloud that was released into the I just the, want to be clear that this is the iconic ho holiday destination, Spain. Uh, <laughs> looks absolutely dog shit. Lads on tour, this is it. It's early. It's early. I've got to go to work. 
I'm going to go do some typey typing. Bye, toothbrush. See ya.